this is Satsuman, and I'm coming to you with a brand new episode of Why Love This Card. And this week, I am going over Mateon the Time Lord. Now, this card has been out for quite a bit. It's gotten a couple of reprints as well as a secret, a super, and a gold rare. Uh, and it is a monster, effect monster, level 10, zero attack, zero defense, a fairy fire type. It cannot be special summon from the deck, which you can't be reasoning out, which is un kind of unfortunate. And if you control no monsters, you can normal summon this card without tributing. This card cannot be destroyed by battle or by card effects. You take no battle damage from battles involving this face of attack position card. And at the end of the battle phase, if this card attacked or was attacked, return all other monsters on the field to the hand and inflict 300 damage to your opponent for each card returned. During your standby phase, you can shuffle this card into the deck. No, you have to shuffle this card back into your deck, even if it's face down. So, uh, why is this card relevant? Well, for one, it's a kind of a board wipe without setting off destruction effects. It's non-targeting removal, given that it could be short-term as well. So, this can be a very good out to Cosmo ships without actually destroying them. And you get to deal some damage along with that, so it can end games possibly if your opponent has a very set up board, but very low health at the same time. This can also work very well with Kaijus. Um, if you don't have access to Owner Seal or remove brainwashing at the, at the time that you have this card, it basically kind of acts like the same thing, and it just sends the card back to your hand regardless. Um, also, if you this could also opens you up to a rank ten plays. Uh, if you so choose, and this can do some nutty things along with Super Dreadnought Rail Cannon. So, uh, while at the end of the battle phase, this would return your Kaijus back to your hand uh, sometimes, you can also use the Kaiju Slumber to summon back out the kai like back out the Kaiju from your deck or whatever. Uh, specifically, choose Kiro here because then you go into a rank ten after you've done quite a bit of damage, and. Uh, <clears throat> And then go into a rank 10 for specifically Super Dreadnought, Rail Cannon, Gustav Max to deal an extra 2,000 damage. You can also go into Sky Palace, uh, Gogandari, I believe is how you pronounce it. And if you don't know what that card does, it can target one monster on your opponent's side of the field, destroys it, and inflicts 1,000 damage. So if you chose to activate a Interrupted Kaiju Slumber, you can destroy whatever monster your opponent you gave to your opponent, probably going to be a Gamma Seal. And then inflict a thousand points of damage on top of that. And then you also have a 3400 attack point monster left on your side of the field. Uh, that is ridiculous. <laughs> uh, there's some stupid things that can be done with this card in this deck. But moving on, what other applications can it be used in? This can also be used in Cosmos. Why can it be used in Cosmos? Well, for one, Cosmos uh, could use this to their advantage by just putting this on the field against the mirror match and be like, no, I'm not letting you get advantage. I am going to go at my own pace and then bring out Destroyer on my turn and then you can't do anything on yours. So uh, Mateon, the Time Lord, uh, can definitely be used with that or they can activate, um, they, they, after like his effect activates, they can go into, uh, they can activate, what's it freaking called? A uh, e telly bring out like a tin can or a or a scarecrow or a farm girl and then banish it to summon back out the dark destroyer. So it's just there's so many things it could be it could be so many applications in this deck. Um, this is also a great way to get around uh, the monarchs. They really like March of the Monarchs at the moment just simply because Domain of the True Monarchs really isn't as useful as it was once was in terms of shutting down the extra deck um, when Pepe was around. And this gets around this effect of not being able to be destroyed. They're also huge monsters that are sometimes very difficult to be to deal with, and uh, they can get some serious advantage. If it also kind of hurts them because they do have to get they do have to use quite a few resources, not all the time, but sometimes in order to bring out these guys. And until the uh, base layer monsters come out, which are like like Power Rangers in, in Yu-Gi-Oh form. Um, they are going to be still a little bit bricky, so this is definitely going to help against this matchup. Moving on, the Burning Abyss matchup, the deck to beat the best deck. Uh, Dante, Traveler of the Burning Abyss, this can really hurt your opponent. Uh, according to the official TCG ruling on Mateon, uh, any cards returned to the extra deck by Mateon's effect, they will still take 300 points of damage. So, if your opponent's a quite a decent setup field with like two or three Dantes or something like that, uh, you could say, no, you are not adding ridiculous traps back to your hand to use on the next turn 
those Dantes are going back to the extra deck and you just lost all those resources uh, to get them out. So uh, Dante is definitely pretty useful for that. Uh, not Dante, uh, Tamea, uh, Mateon is very useful for shutting down Dante plays in terms of that. So uh, that, that's that's pretty welcome for that. Uh, the one bit of warning here against uh, the Mermails, this is probably one of the hardest decks to side against at the moment. Um, just simply because Neptibus just spurs on so many OTKs. Uh it, like if it, like he like he can just it's just stupid you can't it's very hard to get around Neptibus and putting it back into your opponent's hand really isn't going to do anything um the bright side is that they do go through a lot of materials very quickly uh and that that's the one downside with the Atlantean Mermails decks just simply because they can go through materials very quickly and if they don't OTK you immediately then they might struggle in the later game if you can uh, hold out that long. And that, that's that's really the main issue with this card, uh, with Mateon, in terms of the uh, Atlantean, uh, the Atlantean Mermail matchup. So um, just beware of that if you are going up against uh, Mermails. This really doesn't do anything against them. So thank you guys for watching this episode of Why I Love This Card. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, guys, have a nice day. Whoa.